Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about iterated design pattern. Iterated design pattern is a behavioral design pattern and it is also part of the gang of four design pattern. The main intent of this design pattern is to provide a way to access the elements of an aggregate object sequentially without exposing its underlying representation. So what this means basically is that this design pattern was built so that we can segregate the implementation of a collection from its iteration. That is what is the underlying intent of this particular design pattern. So if you think about solid design principle also, it makes a lot of sense because the collection, which is an aggregate of object, should not have the responsibility of how to iterate through the collection. That responsibility should remain with the iterator itself. And that's what this design pattern tells us. So let's go through an implementation and it will become much more clearer when we go through individual code. So for this purpose of this implementation, we'll have two things. We'll have an aggregate, which is nothing but a class which will hold a collection. And then we are going to have an iterator. Iterator is nothing but a class which will be responsible for iterating through the aggregate or collection. So first let's start with aggregate, though aggregate and iterator are related. So we need to create both of them almost in parallel, but let's start with aggregate first. So for the aggregate class, let's change the implementation a little bit to use the .NET 6 methodologies. Okay, now for the aggregate class, first of all, we're going to make it as generic so that we can use the same aggregate class for different types. And then the aggregate needs the iterator. So let's create the iterator class. And since iterator will also have generic, but since you know that we will be dealing with interface and not the concrete class. So for iterator also, I'm going to create an interface. For the time being, I'm not going to give any method. We'll come to the method later. It will become clear what all method we need in iteration once we go to the aggregate. So let's go back to the aggregate. And now for aggregate, what we are going to have is we're going to have a private iterator of T. And then we are going to have a private list of T, which will hold the actual value. And this one can be new list of t. So once we have that, now we would need some way to expose the value because the iterator would need the values to iterate through and also we would need a way to add values. So we can support both through a single method. So we can have public t this. So we can use an indexer index and then this. That's some job for us, so let's make it a little bit more clearer. So we have a get, which will return the value from the list based on the index. And then we'll also have a set. And for the set, what we're going to do is, we're going to have list.add. And then we're going to add the value to the list. So that's our indexer. And then what we are going to do is we're going to expose the iterator. So for that, we can create public i iterator of t iterator. And for that, what we can have is we can have a little bit. We cannot just directly return the iterator. We have to do if iterator is equal to null, then say iterator is equal to new of iterator of t and this is going to be the concrete class 
iterator of t. But iterator of t, if we go back to the iterator, since right now the iterator does not implement i iterator, that's why it's throwing this error, but I'm going to just implement iterator iterator and we should be good. So we started with iterator, we returned the iterator. Now the aggregate is just holding the object and iterator will be responsible for iterating through the object. The other thing we would need for iteration is the count. Basically what is the total number of item the aggregate contains. So for that we'll have a count method and for the count method we can just have underscore list dot count as the value. Now let's extract an interface and let's keep the interface in current file itself. So we got our i aggregate which has these three particular method. One is the index, one is the count and then finally returning the iterator. So our aggregate is ready. Now let's go back to iterator and let's try to finish it. Now for the iterator the first thing we'll need is the aggregate. So in the constructor of the iterator, we are going to have i aggregate of t and aggregate and let's declare this privately. And also just for consistency, given that here all the name starts with underscore, let's give underscore name here as well. Next, what we are going to have is for iteration, what are the things we need? First thing we need is a current value. Second thing we need is, is there any item left? Third thing we would need is a way to move to the next object. So for that, we're going to declare two things. First thing we'll say is the next method. Next, the second thing is the current, which can be just a get. And the last one is bool is left. So we'll have these three. So let's go and implement these three. So for the current, it is going to be nothing but aggregate of index. So we need an index. Let's first declare this. So we're going to declare an index here. And the index will, of course, start with zero. That's the first one. Next thing, let's try to implement is left. So what is the logic of is left? is left is so let's say we have two item 0 and 1 and the count is 2 till we are in index of 1 item is still left but when we go to index of 2 there is no item left so the logic is index is less than the count so for that what we can do is we can just implement it in line and we can say index is less than aggregate underscore aggregate dot count so that will be the implementation of is left and then finally we go to the next so whenever we are doing a next so we are in zero we are asking for next first thing what we are going to do is we are going to do index plus plus so we'll increment it and then we are going to do return and here the auto suggest just gave an aggregate of index which is correct but there will be a condition we'll check is left then yes, aggregate of index. If nothing is left, then we're just going to return the default, which is null. So now we'll go back to program. Well, before we go back to program, we have to define the object, which we have not defined. So what we are going to deal with. So let's say we're going to deal with a person type. Let's just create a record type here. So we can say internal, internal record, person and for simplicity let's say person have two it's name and then int age this is only two things for the time being so we declared our record type which we can use with iterator and aggregator we can use multiple object given that these are generic these two classes can be used for iterating through any object for that matter this is the iterator pattern we implemented. Now let's go and see the code in action. So first thing what we are going to do is say var persons is equal to new aggregate of person. Now we have to add the namespace. 
okay so now we have the person object let's go and add few person here so i can say person so zero is equal to new person and here for the name we can say john age 30 and then let's copy it a couple of times and add two values so first one let's say it's jane and age is 20 and then three name is Michael and age is 10. Now let's get the iterator from it. So you can say bar iterator is equal to persons dot iterator. Iterator is a property. And then what we can do is we can have a simple while condition. And here we can say iterator dot is left. If left then we're going to have console dot right line and here we can say iterator dot current we can print the current and then we'll just move next that's all so now if we run this application it should print john jane and michael we have an error oh, we have to pass remember we updated the iterator to take the aggregate in the constructor which it has to and for the aggregate it is nothing but this so now let's run the program and if we run it we should see john jane and michael as expected so this is in a nutshell what iterator pattern is and as you can see it's very simple to implement a extremely generic implementation of iterator pattern which can be used with multiple object but in .NET or C Sharp, given we already have something called IEnumerator, which is an implementation of iterator design pattern with little bit of difference, meaning it is a little bit sophisticated in a sense that when you do for each loop itself, it walks through the iterator, gets the next item and gives you that value. So you really don't need to implement this kind of implementation. But this is the high level implementation of iterator pattern. There are situations where you might have to create your own iterator, in which case it will be useful. Otherwise, you can just go ahead with iEnumerator and it should work for you. But iEnumerator can be used only with iEnumerable. So that's all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.